Hi then, welcome to the program. My name is Kwajo Yimadi. Thank you for watching today. Today I'll be speaking on the subject of praying and watching. And like we picked up last week, from last week, where we spoke about praying and observing things that are going on within your environment. I want to go on with this particular thought here. You know, in the book of Isaiah, it tells us that who is as blind as my messenger and as deaf as my servant. He says, seeing many things thou observest not. Now, the word observe there, I researched it, and what that means, it means is thou guardest not or you don't watch, which means you see many things, but you don't guard against the things that you can see or the things that, you know, you notice that are going on within your environment. It says you don't set watches up against those things to stop those things from happening. Therefore, he went on and says that, you know, so many are found in prison houses, they are in caves, they are in holes, and no one is saying restore. Now, it's important for us to understand this, that nothing happens within our lives, that the signs of those things are not given to us by God. Jesus himself said about his second coming, that you will see the signs in the stars, you will see it in the sun, you will see it in the moon, which means the physical elements will reveal to you the time and the seasons that are in the spirit. He spoke about the fact that when you see the clouds gather, you know that rain is coming. He says, if you can discern the face of the sky, how come you cannot discern the times? So it's important for us as spirit beings to understand that we need to be able to discern the times based on events that are showing up within our environment to know exactly what is coming our way. And these things really, you know, the, the environment always gives up what is coming next into our lives. The same with the cloud shows us that the rain is about to fall. You don't have bright clouds there with the sun out, you know, and then suddenly the rain just breaks forth. The clouds begin to gather to give you a sign that something is coming here. And therefore you prepare for that so that your quote unquote your nakedness is not revealed and you don't find yourself exposed and once we don't respond to what is going on within our environment in the way and manner in which we ought to what now happens is we get exposed as people and we wonder about the faithfulness of God it is the business of God in his faithfulness to send warning signals to his people it is the business of his people to respond to those signals in obedience to do what they ought to do in order to prevent you know what the enemy might bring their way as much as jesus was the son of god and the only begotten of the father when he walked on the earth in his earthly life even when he was a child and herod launched an attack against jesus what god did wasn't to stop herod what God did was to warn Joseph of the impending danger and to ask Joseph to move Jesus out of that particular place to Egypt in order to protect him for what Herod had intended to do, you know, to Jesus Christ. Now, if God protected his only begotten son by sending a warning signal into the earth, then we've got to understand that God in his faithfulness in bringing protection to our lives will do that by sending signals to us. And these things, the environment itself gives away towards what really is going on. You know, Jesus taught that, listen, he said, this time has come upon you unawares. And the reason is that he said, your heart is overcharged, which means that when your heart is involved in so many things that you're not focused on and you're not looking at what is really going on and ignoring those signals, it says then the day comes upon you unaware. So when you look at this today, how do I respond effectively, you know, to things when they show up within my environment? It says the light affliction will come there to work out an eternal weight of glory. If we respond effectively to those things as they show up within our environment, we turn those things around. Instead of evil to come out of those things, what really happens is an eternal weight of glory emerges from it. If we catch those things early and catch them in time, and pray through on these things, what happens is what should have worked out for evil now turns out there to produce an eternal weight of glory within a life. 
So the first thing we've got to understand is our responsibility as men on the earth, under God, that God will go as far as showing us signals upon the earth, which means that when a person is not, has not yet reached the age of accountability, God will send the signal to the parents of that particular child to protect the child. But once you come of age, then God says it's your responsibility now to decode what is going on within your environment and to respond adequately to it. And when people don't understand this, then they get. The Bible says they are found in prison houses, they, they, are, they are in holes, and it says in caves and all of that, in places of darkness, where their talents, where their gifts, where their capabilities, where their abilities are not being revealed or seen by people because they haven't handled the seasons of their lives correctly. How many people have lost things that God gave to them because they didn't understand that it was their responsibility to protect those things? God told Adam, I have given you the garden. He told him, he said, keep it. That word keep means guard it from intruders. That things will want to intrude into the very things that I've given to you. There'll be things that want to invade the blessing that I've given to you. It's your business to guard it from intruders. I will help you, right? I will show you things, but you must understand that that is your responsibility. You know, the elders have a saying, that it takes more wisdom to live in a house than to build the house. What that means is that when the blessing comes, it takes more to keep the blessing and to live wisely within the blessing than to receive the blessing. A lot of people receive blessings and become, you know, casual and careless about it rejoicing in what God has done for them, which is true. But then they don't go further to understand that we've got to protect this, we've got to cultivate it, we've got to grow it, and we've got to multiply this particular thing that God has given to us. People might have gotten married and rejoiced that the day when they got married that such a wonderful blessing from God, which was true. But then you look down the line, three years, six years down the line, and you see, you know, severe casualties that have happened to people by reason of what God actually gave to them. Which means that the blessing came, you know, from God. But they were simple-minded about things in life. The scripture says that when the scorner is punished, the simple will get wise. Which means you have people who are scorners, which means who are fools. But then you have people who are simple-minded, who are not fools. But, you know, they are innocent, they are good people. But they are not wise in the affairs of this life. They are not walking in the reality of what really this world is all about. They feel that every single person in this world is nice. They feel that, you know, because they don't lie, nobody lies. They, they are simple-minded in their approach. And it's important that we get to the place where Jesus said, be wise as serpents, but be harmless as doves. Which means you're a harmless person, but my friend, you are a sharp person. You can see things a mile off. Like the eagle has sharp eyes. You mount up with wings of an eagle and you can see things miles away. Before they even show up within your environment, you have eliminated the threat in the place of prayer. And this is what God is calling us to. I mean, the disciples sat with Jesus when he was about to go to the cross. And Jesus told them, point blank, face to face here. He said, folks, this night you're going to deny me. You're going to be offended in me. And they told Jesus, clearly. I mean, Peter told Jesus and the rest of the disciples. They said to Jesus, listen, we don't agree with you on what you are saying. Because, you know, till death do us part. That we'll rather choose to die with you than to open up our mouths and to ever deny you in any way. That watch it, Jesus, we're going to stand with you. And they didn't say this out of hypocrisy. They didn't say this out of the were lying to Jesus. They meant the words that they were saying, but they weren't aware of the actual realities in the spirit realm. In fact, Jesus told Peter, he said, you're saying all this. He said, Satan has desired that he might sift you as wheat at this moment, which means if we leave the force of evil to operate, by this time next week, you will not even be on the earth. He said, but I've prayed for you that your faith might not fail, which means I've intercepted that which Satan intended to do in your life, and I've prayed that thing through. And he says, your faith, all right, will not fail in that particular day. That when you are converted, when you've seen the reality of the events of life, when you have met with challenges and things have happened within your environment, go out there and strengthen the brethren. 
teach them these things, that they might be conscious and they might be aware of these things. The Christian experience is not just a casual, lazy experience. We are not called into Christianity just to enjoy the pleasures of this life. We are called into a spiritual warfare that is practical, that is simple, but you've got to understand the reality of the battle and know exactly how to confront these things in order for you to win in life. If you pick up things early and you pray through on things, things will never go wrong within your life. Let me repeat that statement. If you pick up things early enough and you pray through on things, right? When you perceive, when you pick up those things, things simply will never go wrong. Even when they appear to go wrong, you would have put yourself in a position spiritually that you will understand what really is going on, your visibility in the spirit realm will be high. You will know the end of the matter from the beginning. And so as the drama simply plays out, you will know the exact steps you are to take in order for the will of God to be fulfilled within your life. To play right is to live right. Somebody asked me just about 10 minutes before I came into the studio, he said, how do you study the Bible? I want to ask you this question. And I said, listen, they could tell you many theoretical things about studying the Word of God. You know, how you could study based on verses or books and look at verses and look at a contextual study of the Scriptures, where you study the Scriptures in the context in which they are written. I said you could also study, I could tell you about studying biblical characters, you know, or study names and all of that, and study a character like Abraham and do that and study it. I could also tell you about a word study, where you study on a word faith, or you study on a word righteousness, or you study a word prayer, or you study a word praise, or you study a word worship, and get revelation based on that. But I'll tell you one thing, that if you pray effectively, this is what I'll tell you, and get the heavens open over your life, after a season of effective and effectual prayer, and then you open up the word of God, you will get revelation from God's word. I said, let me put it to you this way. When you read the Bible without praying effectively and getting the heavens open, you read the Bible and you gain knowledge from the scriptures. But when you pray effectively and you open up the Bible, you don't read the Bible, the Bible begins to read you. What happens is the scripture begins to speak directly to you as a person, decoding what is going on in your life at that particular point in time and telling you the steps that you are to take within your life. So let's go back to what we're saying here. You notice things within your environment that you start getting uncomfortable with. Things begin to move within your environment and this world, the earth we live in, is in a state of you know constant motion nothing is steady things are being rearranged every single second and so it's important that you are ahead of the curve and not behind the curve this is what Mordecai was talking to Esther about when Mordecai picked up that certain things were going on within the environment that Haman had started making a move against the nation of Israel he saw it on the countenance of Haman that Mordecai did not bow to Haman the Bible says Haman became wroth and his countenance there changed towards him Mordecai knew that something was happening here when Cain's countenance changed to Abel Abel didn't pick up on that Right, Abel simply didn't pick up on that. You see, in the spiritual things here, we're not talking about winning in the public court of opinions of men, arguing whether you know who is right or who is wrong. The issue is in spiritual things, you hardly see what you see in the spirit, but you pray everything you see in the spirit. We're not here to explain that these are the thoughts of people or these are the intents of people. We are here to pick up signals from the Holy Ghost and to pray those things through without discussing anything with anybody, settling it in the spirit, getting your victory in the spirit, finding a way of escape in the spirit, walking through the pathway of God without even mentioning to anybody you know, what you saw and what you prayed. But it's important that you understand this. Mordecai picked it up Mordecai sent a signal to Esther that, listen, Esther, go into the innermost courts of, you, of the king. And when you get there, talk to the king about this, that there might be a reversal of this particular thing. Now, Mordecai told Esther, 
you know, you are not in the kingdom for pleasure because she wanted to change the garment that Mordecai had sent to her. Mordecai had sent garments to her of sackcloth and ashes there that put on the garment of mourning and go on a fast and pray about the state. And she chained the robes and said, look, take this garment here and go and rejoice and all of this. And Mordecai said, you are in the kingdom for such a time as this. You are not in the kingdom, you know, to get entertained and to get and to enjoy yourself. You are in the kingdom for moments like this. When these signals come within your environment and you've got to address these things in prayer and to pray through on these things so that you can change the tide of events on the earth and get the will of God to come to pass upon the earth. Now Esther went in through the court, in Amos court, right, of the king and offered up her prayer unto the king at that particular place and changed the course of events within the life, all right, of the Jews. And the time that, you know, Haman had set to destroy the Jews, that was when they got their victory. Now I want to say something based on this because if you study the book of Esther properly, you, you'll find out that it seemed like the king backed Haman until Esther showed up and went into the innermost court. Now, this, you know, tells us something about what happened in the book of Job. If you look at the book of Job, you suddenly found Satan appearing with the sons of God, which are angels, before the courts of God and requesting and telling God, that listen the only reason god told job and um, god told satan he said listen my servant job have you seen him he said i've been going to and for the earth my eyes have been looking so have you seen my servant job he said listen have you seen how blessed he is and then satan went on and said listen it's because you've built a hedge around him now watch what satan said you've built a hedge around him blessed all the work of his hands protected him that's why he's rejoicing and that's why he's happy if you just give me access to his life you know and i will talk him you'll find out that he will curse you and God said well he's now in the power of your hands now if you look at that it seemed like God backed Satan in almost the destruction of the life of Job there now the minute that conversation ended what we heard was that certain things started going wrong in the life of Job so we found a conversation in the heavenlies that now broke out into events upon the earth so the events that we see upon the earth have their roots really in the spirit realm. And this is what we're saying here. And from the spirit realm comes all the major events that we have upon the earth. But going back to that thought, you will have felt that it appeared that God almost supported Satan in the fact that, you know, you can go in and destroy Job. But the sons of God, who are the angels, were there and they watched all of this happen without interfering with the conversation or the events. Now, I want to say something here. If you look at the book of Esther, I want to correct your thought here. The book of Esther is the only book in the Bible where the name of God is not mentioned. So what we have are types and figures, which means that when you read that, it means everybody inside the book represents somebody in Scripture. So the king represented God. Mordecai was a type of the Holy Spirit. Esther was the type of the church. Haman was an adversary of the church, uh, adversary of people of God, a type of Satan. Now what happened was that Haman got letters from the king, which is like Satan going and getting letters from God there, approving the destruction of the Jewish people who are the people of God, looking like the king supported Haman in what Haman was doing to destroy his people. But Mordecai, who is a type of the Holy Spirit, went deeper and told Esther, and if you study it, you'll find out the Bible says, Haman went into the outer court of the king and made his request to the king. But Mordecai told Esther something, that you are the only one who has access to the innermost court. And once you get into the innermost court, you can reverse every single thing that Haman has gotten from the outer court. In Christianity, Jesus came and shed his blood that we can ha now have access into the holiest of all. Now, the church has access into the holiest of all, which Job did not have. So the conversation that Satan had with God, if that kind of conversation is initiated today into the life of the Christian, 
the Christian must understand that you have access the same way Esther went into the innermost court and said, listen, I have come with one request. And the king said, what's it? I want a reversal on all the letters that were given to Haman. And I want Haman's power to be broken and the life of Haman to be given to us based on this particular thing that he had done. And the king approved of that, which is God approving of that. So having access into the innermost court today, gives us the power to reverse any event that has happened upon the earth or is about to happen which means death and life are now in the power of the tongue of the christian satan cannot go in except we allow him which means once he goes in there what happens is on the earth we start seeing movements right in what we'll call the outer court events on the outside will start showing that something has been hatched in the spirit realm against you countenance of people can start changing attitudes of people will start changing towards you there will be some movement that starts going on in the fiscal realm there it's important for you as a believer to understand that you have access into the innermost court where you can go in and inform God of what you've seen going on on the outside and you want an absolute reversal of the way and manner in which things seem to be shaping up within your life. The refusal to do that or out of ignorance, right, or direct disobedience is what allows the enemy to still have some sway. Once we understand that inner court has been opened up, which means that it is our own conversation before God that stands in our life. Regardless of anything that Satan plans to do, he can only get away if we don't penetrate the innermost court and go and meet God in worship and tell him that we are asking for his judgment on this particular thing. So you see that kind of thing going on. Go to God with thanksgiving. You know how you do it? What Paul said was that the minute it, there was the messenger of Satan sent to buffet me, he said, I took pleasure in my necessity. I took pleasure. Don't get irritated by those things. Go in and thank God. Praise him that those motions and movements are happening. Then take your own request that let this light affliction according to your word work out an eternal weight of glory. And God will begin to grant you you know, those things that you've requested for and asked him for in prayer. And you begin to see those things written in the word of God as you go and read the Bible, that here is the judgment of God. And you start pronouncing those things over your life. Because of time, we've got to stop uh, at this particular time. You can join me for further conversations along these lines on Twitter at Pastor Bojo. Thank you for watching once again. God bless you and have a wonderful week in his presence. Thanks for watching the Quantum League.